Hi, and a very good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to our session, The Dawn of Aviation. I am Nancy Sun from ID Academy, your host for this session. ID Academy is the Singapore affiliate of the Henry Ford Museum of Invention and Entrepreneurship and is a member of the Invent Ed community of global educational collaborators to prepare students for a future yet to be invented. This program is part of our lineup for the Pratt & Whitney Invention Convention, Singapore Open Nationals 2021. Let's welcome our speaker, Captain Raymond Koo, an airline captain who currently happens to be in Seoul. Otherwise, he would be in his flight simulator as the background. Captain Raymond Koo found co-founded SkyX Immersion. SkyX Immersion believes in delivering opportunities, especially to the youth. Amongst many exciting plans, their core business is an immersion into aviation science through flight simulation programs. Raymond, would you like to say a few words before we do the introduction through one of your videos? Hi everyone, thanks for having me. Yes, indeed, uh, we try our best to use technology to uh, uh, bring uh, you know, opportunities to our youth. And uh, it's not just simulation. So basically simulation is just a platform on which we deliver uh, our edu, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, education-based uh, systems to our youth, and we are actually building an aircraft as well with a secondary school, and we hope to inspire uh, as many people as we can in Singapore and the region. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much there, Raymond. Throughout the session, please feel free to post any questions for Ray and using the Q&A function. We will have some time after the sharing to answer some of your questions. All right. So now, we're going to share with you what Ray has prepared. Thank you. Hi everyone, thank you for joining the Singapore Invention Convention uh, 2022. It's uh, great to be here. Thank you for uh, giving me the honor to speak to you about the dawn of aviation in the Wright Brothers in Ohio and the entire ecosystem. A big hello to all you young people, parents, teachers, the entire industry ecosystem. And that's what we need to grow and nurture uh, the youth uh, together as a team, as an ecosystem. And of course, uh, I'm an airline captain uh, by profession. And uh, my first office is up there about 35,000 feet or so, uh, with the winds and the skies and the clouds. And my second office really is right now here as I speak with you in Seoul, South Korea in the Grand Hyatt Hotel. And uh, well, we all have different calling uh, with regards to what we want to do in life besides our uh, daytime, full-time profession. And I believe uh, my calling and a few others uh, will be to build young adults. And we started Skyx Immersion to try to bring opportunities to uh, young people through uh, immersive experiences, you know, through building stuff. In fact, we're going to build an aeroplane and uh, with a secondary school. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is really to uh, inspire young people to put uh, together uh, their uh, resources, uh, the knowledge and apply them uh, into the real application. Uh, as Im immersively as possible and with today's technology a lot of stuff is obviously possible so let's go straight to the uh, the dawn of aviation there are many many books written about the Wright brothers as we all know and uh, the famous one and the one that I'm really sticking to right now uh, is by uh, uh, David McCullough and uh, very famous writer historian award winner and basically, the idea that we have uh, two guys called Orville and Wilbur Wright, and then they, they, you know, they develop a flying machine uh, for sustained 
and a controlled and a powered flight. Um, you know, it is uh, simply overly uh, understated, you know. And they, they spend a lot of time in their entire lives, so both of them. Uh, so one of them uh, passed on a limb, the one lived till the mid-1900s. And they did many things uh, from their youth all the way to adulthood before uh, planes were built and uh, subsequent inventions were made. Okay, so let's uh, have a look at uh, where they grew up in. All right, they grew up, uh, they were born in uh, Ohio and uh, this entire region of uh, pretty much northeastern America, uh, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania. And there, the, there, there was a second revolution, right? Everyone was creating stuff, right? Uh, obviously, uh, Michigan, uh, Henry Ford was, was there and his very good friend is uh, Thomas Edison, right? Uh, pretty much in New York and Pennsylvania. Uh, so what they d did was uh, they moved from the uh, first to the second industrial re revolution and they moved from coal to oil and those are resources and then they moved from basically uh, you know darkness into electricity and light bulbs uh, as you can see around us you know uh, with everything's closed uh, um, with everything closed we still have brightness and the world changed completely and obviously uh, carriages and all that were taken over by cars by the rail uh, you know, uh, uh, the rail basically the rail and the cars took everyone from a very localized life from east of America to across west and south so what happened there uh, what did the Wright brothers to right, and how did they grow up? So the Wright brothers actually grew up with uh, Orville and uh, Wilbur together. They grew up with Catherine, uh, very understated uh, that she is extremely instrumental as a family member who worked together as a team uh, to bring about aviation. And obviously a very important person is Bishop uh, Wright. Bishop Wright is uh, uh, the father of those kids. And Bishop Wright, it's called Bishop Wright because he's a minister and he goes around the United States to preach uh, and to share things with people. And more importantly, he shares a lot with the kids. He, when he traveled across the United States to preach uh, through, you know, via the uh, trains and everything, uh, what, they did, what he did was uh, not just preparing his work to you know, for his speeches and his uh, sermons, right? Uh, he observed nature. He loved nature. He would write back to the, you know, wrote, wrote tons and tons of letters to the kids and the kids would read them and they would write back to the father. And the father write, wrote very well, obviously, right? And, uh, and, and, and writing and observing and uh, documenting what you uh, observe is extremely important. In invention obviously right uh, a lot of people call them as Nancy Wood inventors lock so you will lock down what you observe so so but it was natural right and he didn't plan to do that he just wrote letters to his kids and his kids would just read them and was mesmer you know like it's, it's not like us you know somebody to uh, the tell uh, you know like I, I'm telling you that right now I'm in South Korea and this is a beautiful place and there's nothing for you to imagine about right like just google it and just you know, look at the pictures that you, you know, uh, you have had or your friends have had uh, 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 while they visited before. So it, was, it, it wasn't a very globalized world. It was a very localized life. So they had to, they had to, very important, they had to imagine what the parents, what, uh, sorry, what their uh, father was trying to say. So they would imagine the trees and the autumn and the leaves falling and they're crazy waterfall that he observed and the rainbows and the birds and the clouds and all and lightning and everything else right so they developed this habit of, of observation also he they have done observations after observation they spent hours and hours looking at birds thousands of hours looking at birds and uh, taking photographs of them, they love photography as well. They're curious about everything. They're hungry for knowledge. 
and the uh, and the uh, uh, the curious about the unknown. And then what they'll do is they will document what they see and the pictures that they take, and they will see how the birds fly. You see how the bands, uh, how the wings bend, and uh, to make that turn, that turn in a particular degree. And you know, so they were very meticulous at uh, 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 on the, well, what they observe and obviously they documented everything. So that is observation. They did a lot of research as well. So they they spoke with people, and uh, they visited their own library at home. And uh, that is something to, uh, worth mentioning. So Bishop Wright believed in reading, gathering good information that is useful for your application. So he's got a, a huge library at home. Remember those days, uh, th those were, you know, uh, the Wright brothers were, you know, the richest people, they were ordinary Americans, right? So the house, uh, they, they had no electricity, obviously, uh, they had no running water, nothing, but they had a huge library. They had books and books, so they immersed themselves into books. and. And besides just reading from their own books, they go to the local library, regional libraries, and they go to, uh, they ask for papers from universities, from uh, big institutions, government institutions, uh, such as uh, the Smithsonian Institution. Very well do documented what they did and uh, how they get information. So, but not forgetting this, they weren't gathering information for the sake of it. They weren't trying to be a professor and uh, they weren't uh, academic purely. So what they did was they get those information and they improve on their kikes. They improve on their initial um, prototypes. And in fact, even before that, they use all, all those information to concretize and firm up and clearly identify the problem of flight, which is a problem they're trying to solve, right? The problem of flight. And they, uh, they, they very clearly identified those problems. And they very clearly uh, created the first few prototypes at the first few prototype locations, such as the famous Kitty Hawk, right? And so in 1903, finally, it was um, um, declared that they were the first to fly. And that was just seconds moments of this great, great success. But it wasn't like the big story. And after that, they continue to build stuff. They continue to visit uh, the, uh, you know, places like France, like Paris, and, uh, you know, the, and therefore it's called the Great Race uh, of Flight. And everyone was trying to be first. And everyone was uh, although it is, they're collaborative and all that in sharing information on the size of flight, uh, but the very first uh, showmanship, the very sh uh, first show rather, uh, was uh, not till later. And, and then everyone started to show all the stuff that they produced. And remember, uh, on, before that, uh, cars were built. So after cars were built, remember roads had to be built, right? And uh, so after that, a lot of things were invented because of the invention of flight. And we have now airways and all that. And maybe I can show you this. Right? Well, my next stop from Seoul, if you want to know, is I'm flying with the uh, Los Angeles, right? And that's what you call like, airways, right? So. Uh, airways were built, you know, I mean, you can fly all, all over the shop and there are more and more planes in, in the world. So, yeah, so that in every state you will have different airways. And then, in, in fact, up to today, if you want to speak about the latest of airways uh, currently being built, and those are for the drones. So, you can see one discovery leads to another. It's a huge story of how, how planes were first built and then for 100 years up to today, as you know, uh, like Pratt & Whitney will be building the latest of technologies of and solving new problems. I'm very sure they're working on SAF, which is Sustainable Aviation Fuel. It's a huge climate issue, everyone knows about that. 
and that would be the new industries, new technologies, new economy uh, where we go into sustainable aviation fuel. And uh, so remember, it wasn't like they woke up one morning and decided to make a plane. They, over time, with their spirit, with their habit, and with the inventive behaviors, which means they put into action what they learn. So, so what you do in school is super important, right? So you need the knowledge. You you accumulate and you know the parents, industry work, the teachers to learn information, right? I mean, you need to uh, measure certain things, you need certain mathematical calculations, and you need to know all these things, right? And then you apply into the real world, and then you invent stuff. So I, 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 I it's just a very short uh, speech, you know, uh, just uh, to inspire everyone to go out there and do things. Uh, if I may share a bit of myself, so uh, during my free time, uh, you know, I, I mean, I could go shopping, I could find the next best restaurant and all that. Uh, but, you know, I could do very simple things that anyone can do, you know, like we all go observe uh, uh, people and I go, you know, for many years I've been visiting places like NTU, I've uh, spoken to professors, I have been to uh, several aviation uh, communities and clubs and I see how the new generation guys like you uh, learning today, you know, I would fly, in, in, in California, I'll be flying, you know, seaplanes, you know, seaplanes that land on the water. And not forgetting, uh, if I may share, like after the first uh, aeroplane was built that is fully controlled, and uh, the Wright brothers were literally the first builders and flyers and instructors because they could actually build something, power it, have it sustained in flight, and control exactly. The heading and the speed that they want and the altitude they want to hold all right so after that many planes were built the idea that you know uh, the problem of flight was done with uh, is not true right after that a lot of uh, both innovations and invent new inventions were done where we now uh, carry um, people and cargo from places to places, uh, and also use aircrafts to do different things, right? Like uh, seaplanes will do different work, and there are also planes that basically scoop up water from the sea and go uh, fight fire, right? We have bush pilots who uh, innovate, right, and build different planes to actually. Uh, they call bush pilots, and they are uh, they, they 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 could just fly over an area and spray pesticides, so you can spray fertilizers over farms and stuff like that, right? And obviously, uh, the medical world work with the aviation world to create uh, aeromedical services, right? So, so I, I would inspire, I would love to encourage everyone to uh, go forth and look at uh, aviation in a very different light and ask yourselves what would the future look like uh, first being inspired by the Wright brothers and go read about them go read about uh, how they became the famous Wright brothers right uh, and which was never meant to be they never meant to be famous and not forgetting I'd like to share with you as well before I go that invention is something that not everyone go for for a very simple reason you are going to build something that's never existed and when you try to do that there's a huge chance like the Wright brothers you are going to be ridiculed you are going to be called insane and that's why Steve Jobs love insane people you know round packs square holes the other way around and all the uh, you know um, people who has no 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 respect for the status quo and all that so you look like rebels you look like uh, people who you know idle and not doing much and dreaming away and you 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 know you'll be like you know the Wright brothers were trying to fly something off the air and then all the neighbors were looking and uh, you know they were in the green fields and 
these two brothers and what are they doing? Why don't they just go get a degree and stuff like that, which is obviously nothing wrong. But when you want to invent something that's never been done before, you need the courage, the self-belief, and the belief in your vision, and you know you will not regret trying. And that's the most important thing. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Ray. I think it's such an awesome message that you have there. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah, because I'm in uh, Seoul right now in uh, Grand Hyatt. Uh, it's Grand Hyatt, but the Wi-Fi is not very Grand Hyatt. So I was just worried. <laughs> Yeah, uh, not coming through. At least I got a pre-recorded. Yeah, so pretty much uh, covered uh, the uh, entire uh, spirit, right? Yeah, the spirit of invention, and you know the entire habit and uh, behavior, and and a lot of these inventors, including uh, the Wright brothers, obviously uh, Thomas Edison and the famous uh, Henry Ford. Uh, you know, these these things didn't just happen, and then you know, like we, you know, we, you know, from what we know in uh, you know in history books, it's just like a you know a five minute introduction, but no, this these guys went through the entire same system that we're trying to teach today. Uh, just like what ID is trying to teach, you know, uh, through STEMI causes and you know uh, using Scampi, using um, um, you know methodologies to to generate ideas. Oh, of course, first of all, you wanna you know find that 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 pain point, you know, that um, which is uh, you know today's terms. Uh, you know, you want to solidify and concretize uh, what the problem truly is, the why, the how, and the what. Yeah. So, uh, so I just, I know it's an old story, uh, but uh, nevertheless, it's, it's a story of why I'm in Seoul uh, today uh, as well. Uh, otherwise, there wouldn't be uh, aviation. But that same parallel, that same uh, applicable parallel uh, can be used by all you uh, young inventors. And uh, I think we 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 wanna we wanna say thank you, you know, to uh, uh, people of that generation, the second industrial revolution. That, you know, they built America, and then eventually uh, it propagated, and then today's world is built. And we're right now in the uh, we finished with the third revolution with Steve Jobs and guys, and now we're in the fourth revolution, and it's in our hands. Yeah, the future is in our hands. I'm so proud of you, uh, all of you guys who are joining this uh, invention convention uh, this year. Yeah, I wish you all the best uh, with all, all your growth uh, in today's world. You know, you need to stand the future, right? The future is all about, uh, you know, the future skills, right? Uh, uh, would all be, you know, uh, floating, uh, thinking, you know, I mean, there's so many causes out there. Uh, just as I mentioned, uh, STEMI by, uh, uh, you know, you can get to know more from Nancy. And of course, there are uh, all the other causes, even uh, a very uh, 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 well-known causes like, you know, De Bono and all that, they teach you lateral thinking, critical thinking, and very similar, uh, I, I would believe, uh, to uh, um, uh, uh, what uh, Nancy is trying to share with uh, the young people uh, today. Uh, we want to uh, understand that with new technologies and with... Uh, Robotics, especially, uh, taking over a lot of our, uh, yeah, you know, 1.2 billion jobs. Apparently, uh, you know, you want to know that you, 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 you need to generate, uh, be able to find problems, generate ideas, uh, be brave to try new things, experiment, invent, innovate. You know, you want to be T-shaped, not just like one way down, right? You want to be pie-shaped uh, if possible, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I wish everyone a good luck uh, to your. Uh, 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 competition, the tournament, uh, Singapore Open, and uh, yeah, back to you, uh, Nancy. If there's any question, I'm more than happy. To... Yeah, uh, was um, just a reminder to the participants to feel free, please key in your questions through the Q and A. I am in conversation with Captain Raymond Koo, airline captain who is now in Seoul. All right, as part of his travel, part of his job. So Raymond, um, you've painted a great um, story there and very important, I think, when we are teaching our young students, even the teachers, what you mentioned earlier is important to look at from Edward De Bono is talking about, he's the father of lateral thinking. 
With STEMI, we are teaching the vertical thinking approach of SCAMPA. So, which indirectly actually links into what you have mentioned earlier, which we will consider and call it the random stimuli. The father to the uh, Wright brothers, he actually got them to take pictures, observe through photography. And it was this interest, it sounds like, um, how they observed birds fly. Now, I've always known that the Wright brothers, the planes, right, that they established in the aviation industry because of what they found that we all are flying everywhere in the world. But I know that's not true because you've told us that actually the story originated even before that in New Zealand. So one of the things I want to find out is this ability to use observation and it's important to trigger um, new inventions from there. How important is that when you are guiding your students now to build a plane, because I'm sure they all think that only Pratt and Whitney builds planes, but now you are actually guiding students to build their own planes. Can you share more with us on that? Okay, yeah. So I would like to start off uh, saying uh, about uh, painting a very uh, 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 a proper picture of how the brothers were in comparison to all the all the rest of them uh, who, whom they were competing with. Uh, we were we we are talking about uh, uh, the experts in the field of aviation. Uh, we are talking about uh, uh, the professors and uh, government bodies. Uh, yeah, and by the way, it's all in all the books that have been, uh, you know, it is very well captured of how very ordinary two boys with their sister, uh, Catherine, uh, actually beat the rest of them. You know, the rest of them had money. The rest of them had knowledge. The rest of them had um, um, all the resources that the ordinary Americans like the Wright brothers would not have. So now, now that 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 brings, uh, 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 you know, I think we all be very curious. And how did the Bright Brothers beat the rest, right? So the so 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 you know we 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 have the same American airspace. We have the same winds. We have the same clouds. We have, but they have more money. They have more, you know. I mean, to in a lot of them, they use all the uh, you know the uh, the government systems, and then they they they, they launch the platforms uh, on the waters. Yeah. And they will use catapult, you know, and then they will blast off, you know, and all these things you got to build, you know, in the waters, in the river, in the sea, it's gonna cost a lot of money. So what did, uh, how did the Wright brothers beat the rest of them? It's just sheer two brains in the head that beat the rest of them. It is a thinking skills, a creative thinking skills, the ability to break out of the normal, of the norms and try something totally different. I mean, through a lot of work, they look at how others did it, right? And others just went vertical, right? And it just went like, okay, we try this and we try this. And so they were all going marginal gains, right? But the Wright brothers went, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, they, they, they thought very differently. They thought about how uh, the, the aerodynamics were making things work, how the birds were doing certain things. And then they try and then they observe and then they try and they observe without, without a reference to how people succeed or fail. They, they did not bother. They did as they believe. So uh, I think we, we could bring an example like uh, what Elon Musk in today's world would say. You know, you back to the uh, basic fundamentals. Because you need to know, you know, as young inventors and students, you need to know that uh, uh, to gather good fundamentals. Yeah, you don't have to get, uh, you know, 95 for, for your exams, but you want to understand the fundamentals and then apply those fundamentals creatively using different methods. Yeah. So you could see that the Wright brothers weren't going for propulsion, you know, strength and stuff. They were going for method. So the methodology was different from the others. 
And uh, yeah, so that was that was really inspiring because uh, I did not know, uh, to be honest, if I had not like investigated, right? Then I thought the Wright brothers must be some, you know, uh, senators' kids, you know, they got all the money so they could try different things. They can use different machines. They can give a call to, uh, you know, Pratt and Whitney and borrow an engine. No, no, no. They just used creativity and they invented the plane. Hi. Thank you very much on that. And we have a question from the audience, Jillian, is asking, what first inspired you to be a pilot? Okay, so that is another part of the ecosystem. So uh, I lived in the day uh, where uh, everyone was watching the movie Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Another, uh, you know, uh, so uh, happenstance, right? Everyone is uh, talking about today. So it depends on, uh, you know, your average of five people you hang out with. You know, that's what they say. So I was lucky. So uh, basically, what happened was the Youth Flying Club, whom honestly I would truly uh, love to promote, uh, is, uh, uh, I mean, I was very lucky. So they came to our schools. And obviously, you know, I've always been an adventurer. Uh, you know, my best friend and, and, and uh, you know, and I is doing very well uh, in the Air Force. And we are all pilots. Uh, we wanted to be since we were 14 years old. And we were adventurers. So we, we always want to do things that were exciting. And, uh, and as I said, uh, during those days, there were tons of movies. And it was not long after the Vietnam War. There were a lot of fighter plane movies. There were a lot of... Uh, uh, transport plane movies, there were a lot of uh, bomber plane movies, all kinds of uh, movies that had things flying around. And, and it was clear at 14, my good friend and I, we wanted to be a pilot. So, yeah, so through experiences. So, the point uh, um, that I would like to share um, in today's world and back to what is really useful for everyone uh, listening uh, in this uh, century, in this era, is. Um, the importance of exposure, the um, importance of experiences. Any psychology will talk to you about creativity through this same method. And that's how creativity is built upon through experiences after experiences. And then you merge them together and you have a great idea. And But you, you need to have experiences. You need to get out there to do things and you need to go lateral slightly. I mean, uh, nothing wrong with studying harder and harder. But, you know, make time to expose yourself, go to places. And I believe uh, in the opening, the CEO uh, um, was saying, welcome to Michigan. And I seriously think everyone should go to Michigan and visit. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Ray. And following on on that question, since 14 that you've dreamed to fly and you finally have been flying all over the world for all these years. Do you have a desire to do something different? That's what Madeline is asking, right, from the audience. Right, definitely. So uh, what, what I would love to do, which is uh, what I'm doing right now, uh, or beginning to do right now uh, as a startup through SkyX Immersion, is to uh, use what I have and gather all the experiences that I had and continue together uh, to uh, with the kids to pass on as just as this uh, talk uh, to bring uh, you know uh, uh, life in the, or rather breathe more life I'm not saying that uh, there's no life in learning today more life into the learning through activities you know active learning lifelong learning you know and all these habits that uh, as mentioned the Wright brothers uh, you know um, nurtured through that throughout the entire lives you know i mean they went to school they weren't bums you know chilling and you know trying to be rock stars you know uh, uh no they they went to school they were very very uh uh you know they they they, they learned well in school they studied hard uh, but they were always on projects after school not not studying even more after school they were on projects after school and you know it uh, it complements one another, the academic side and the practical side. Right. So the creativity is what actually gave us what we call planes that we can all sit on comfortably today because it builds on 
with the improvement year after year. So since you embarked on the topic of skills, there is another question from the audience. What skills do you need to be a pilot apart from the technical skills? And that was something that I wanted to ask you myself because I was thinking that, um, you know, we have the School of um, Engineering and on Monday we had Alex, the engineering manager who were talking to us about it. And then now we want to, we are interested to know what do you need to do to be a pilot? Definitely. So um, very interesting question because I, I was uh, about to address that as well. And that's what SkyX immersion is truly about. And uh, what we were, we, what we're teaching is not really uh, flying planes, right? What we are doing is using activity called aviation on a flight simulator to teach you uh, thinking skills, leadership skills, collaboration skills, teamwork, you know, like from like to get uh, from Singapore to here uh, uh, yesterday, it took us a series of skills that is needed even more so for you young people in the next, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, this, uh, in this era where you, um, you know, interpersonal skills and your ability to gather information well, timely and everything and being very focused on what is more important. So you need to prioritize. And those are all skills uh, needed to eventually come to the decision-making where there is a lot of uh, thinking process that uh, has to be done uh, before you decide to you know, uh, make a decision. With, uh, say if the weather is bad here and then it goes somewhere else, you know? Yeah, it's not like, okay, let's go to Fukuoka because the sushi there is nice, right? Yeah. But you just have to, you know, there's a series of thinking process, you know, you have to weigh the different, you know, the threats and, and, and stuff. And you look at all the benefits of going to this airport instead of that. Or, you know, so consider, uh, so it is basically an entire spectrum of thinking skills. And as I mentioned, <clears throat> uh, that this is where I believe you young investors are uh, very strong in and probably and very, very likely stronger than the rest of your cohort because you're able to look at a problem and look at it in a very broad lateral manner. And then you can generate even more ideas. It's only when you generate more ideas and you have more options and then you can zoom down to decide on that one particular point. Yeah. So it is not just the technical side. Yeah, but technical, of course, uh, basically the, the, there will be a skill topic which we are not at now in the invention convention. So basically skills is all about practice and stuff like that. Yeah, but more importantly, uh, to be a pilot, uh, it's slightly easier than to be a commander, which is a totally different story altogether. So I would assume that, yeah, um, you know, they were asking me as a captain, and I think those are to be a commander of a flight that handles the entire, not just the technical part of the aircraft, you need to handle your team, uh, you know, the flying team, as well as the service team, as well as the passengers and the rest of it. I see. All right. Thank you. Did not know that there was a commander on the flights, just thought the captain was in charge of everyone. Thank you for sharing that. And there is another question here is, what age group is suitable for the SkyX immersion programs? Is there any prior science knowledge required? Oh, no, definitely no prior science knowledge required. Uh, at this stage, we are focusing on uh, uh, the secondary school students. And just, just, just so that we can uh, uh, get it off, uh, uh, you know, well and focused before we you know extrapolate and, and you know let it propagate uh, and in fact to be very honest we're working very closely with uh, secondary school and we we, we want to keep it that way we want to uh, be very focused on identifying uh, the the uh, the problems and the needs yeah which is not that much you know, to, to be honest yeah i mean for for certain reasons I would not uh, mention the school, but you know, it's a very futurist, futuristic school. And I think the schools are doing super well. Uh, if there is a parent asking, uh, I'd like to share with you that, yes, I think, uh, I mean, we have a great country. Uh, we have a uh, uh, good education system. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm obviously working <clears throat> closely with them because otherwise I wouldn't have the permission to build a plane with the school. Yeah, and I understand uh, that, uh, uh, you know, just a chat, Nancy, you, you have Japanese uh, competitors here as well? Yes, we do. We have a number of them, almost close to 20 of the Japanese um, international school students who are participating and I strongly encourage um, our audience um, to visit tonight when the first two teams will be uh, meeting with some of the judges Wonderful. at 8 p.m. So um, if you're not flying yet, uh, Ray, join us at that time. Yes, I will be. Full time, not so. <laughs> yeah, so I love to see them. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, my, 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 my children were going to uh, the Japanese school in Singapore. They're half Japanese. And yes, I, so I, 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 I think I'm confident to speak both for, for MOE as well as the Japanese schools. And I think they are learning very well, very broad. Uh, I think there is still a, is a transition stage. I think a lot of parents are still going for that. You know, I, you know, I don't know why my kid got 95. You know, I thought he was going to get 98. Yeah, I mean, but that's, 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 that's love, right, for our children. Yeah, but I think we are all uh, moving into, um, um, you know, learning by doing, you know, active learning, lifelong learning um, uh, methodologies, and we are transiting, so, so is Japan, so is Singapore, uh, and, 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 I, and I truly encourage uh, parents to get the kids, uh, you know, I mean, of course, you have to, there is always, a, you know, a, you know, everyone has 24 hours a day, so the kid might, uh, you know, uh, have to uh, reschedule their things and, uh, you know, worry about the next 95 to 98 marks, yeah? So just stay at 95, that's good enough. <laughs> or if you're 85, just stay at 85. And basically, um, you know, uh, devote time into exposure, experiences. Yeah, I'm very sure uh, IDE uh, has a couple of causes as well for, for young people to be exposed, to build things, to do things, to, to, to have a laugh and, you know, and yeah, there's all creativity, right? Yeah, you know, so yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, having a laugh is not a joke because mm -hmm. it, the funniest people in the world is, uh, they are so because they are very intelligent, right? They are very creative. They are always out of the box. That's why they're funny, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to, you know, go forth and uh, do things and have more exposure experiences. Okay. Thank you very much, Ray, for the time taken, um, you know, to join us and to share with us so many, so much, I would say many nuggets of wisdom for our young people and um, educators as well, because most important, you know, when you mention about this uh, round peg and square hole, I always think about the movie Apollo 13. <laughs> yeah, and you have to create at the very moment whatever resources that you have available to in order to save the astronauts up there in space. So that to me is such a memorable um, episode that I think in terms of skills, we want to encourage our young people to really invent because the future is really as what Dr. Linako said this morning, the future is now and we can't wait for things to happen, but rather we have to make the future ourselves. So everyone, thank you very much for joining us for the dawn of aviation. And thank you very much, Ray, all right, thank for you. taking the time to share your experience, your knowledge with us. Thank Before we end, uh, could we request just to have a picture? Uh, Peter is here uh, who will be helping us with taking the screenshot. So all you and I need to do is just to smile. One, two, three. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. This session is part of our Pret & Whitney Invention Convention Singapore Open Nationals. And you, are, you can join us for more of such sessions over the next few days. We have educators webinars coming up tomorrow afternoon at three and on Friday as well. Not forgetting our judging taking place tonight at 8 p.m. with the Japanese students. Join us at our virtual platform where you can visit the booths of the inventors participating this year.
We also love to hear from you. So reach out to us using the feedback form via this QR code or through any of our social media handles. If you like to drop us a message to uh, Captain Ray, please do so as well. We will be able to pass your messages on or to find out more about Skyx Immersion. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.